Hello everyone, I'm Louise Chan, I'm the founder of Welldoing.org, which is a therapy platform which matches people with therapists online and in person. This is Wendy Bristow, who's one of our therapists. Um, she's a therapist and executive coach who sees clients near Hoxton in East London. She's trained as a psychodynamic therapist and often sees clients about relationships and work anxiety. She's available on the World Women platform. Um, and I thought that we'd start uh, with asking her uh, what psychodynamic therapy is. Yeah. Bit of a big question. Good question. question. Big word. <laughs> big answer often. Um, well, in a nutshell, it works, it's wor about working with the unconscious. Uh, apparently, in, in recent months, neuroscience has come up with a percentage of how much of our conscious brain we use all the time. Does anybody know what percentage they came up with as, the, you know, the percentage of consciousness that got you into this room today? One percent, they reckon. So, a lot of what we do is unconscious. Uh, feelings, behave, uh, what drives behaviours, what drives thoughts, uh, unconscious beliefs that we might have about ourselves, about relationships. And all this feeds into um, the way we behave in relationships or everywhere, in fact. And so, psych uh, psychodynamic therapy is about trying to get, if you're feeling difficult feelings or you find yourself engaging in unhelpful behaviours, trying to bring more of it into consciousness and then you've got some more personal agency over it. Because so much of what happens in relationships and drives our relationships is kind of automatic, um, psychodynamic therapy helps you bring more of it into unautomaticness, that's not a word, but you know, the opposite, <laughs> you know, so that we have more choices and personal agency over it. And how often do you think people seek therapy because of their relationships? Loads. I mean, lo relationships hurt people uh, more than anything else, really. Uh, relationships have the power, certainly romantic relationships, we know from all the rom-coms, they have the power to make us supremely happy. Anything that can make you supremely happy has the ability to make you supremely miserable. And obviously, relationships bring about those highs and lows. And if you are struggling with the lows, then quite often that's when people turn up in my consulting room. Now, we, when we were talking about what we could talk about in this particular mm. um, session, you told me that you had a lot of people who came to see you because they were having difficulty getting over a relationship yeah. that may not even have been a, you know, not a marriage, not, a, not, a, not even long term, but, but a relationship nevertheless, but that the mm. end of it has been very traumatic for them. Mm -hmm. Can you talk yeah. a bit about that? Sure. So, yes, I mean, obviously I see lots of people who've had long relationships, but it may not necessarily be a long relationship or even, you know, sometimes clients say it wasn't a relationship even it was a few dates or it was you know four hot nights or something um, but uh, yeah I think there's kind of two things that go on here one is uh, in the modern world with the technology that we have and the dating apps and so on quite often uh, when people, for, if they meet on an app or even if they've met in a bar, there's a hell of a lot of texting, emailing, whatsapping, and it kind of creates uh, a sense of intimacy. And then maybe they go on a few dates and they're still texting, 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 and then suddenly they're ghosted. I think one of the most sadistic things you can do to somebody else is just ghost them, whether you've been with them three years or whether you've been with them three dates. Um, and then suddenly it all falls away. And so that sense they had of like, oh, we're really getting on well, you know, 
John Lennon is both of our fam favourite Beatles, and we, <laughs> we've got, so, is there anything we don't have in common? And then suddenly it's kind of like you get a message saying, I don't think this is working out, you know, have a nice life, kaboom, and they never hear, you know, and if they try and get hold of that person, say, please tell me what it was, you know, feedback is useful in life, nothing, it's very, very hard. And anything like that, even if it's been a short period, it's a loss. Maybe you had loads of hopes already invested in that. You know, we both love John Lennon, he's the, he's the one. Um, we can all invest a different amount of hope in relationships. Also depends where we are in our life. If we're in our 30s, we maybe invest more hope because the stakes are higher. Um, and then all that, I mean, sometimes I feel, somebody said to me once in my training, um, the loss of the dream of a relationship can be just as painful as the loss of the actual person. Um, and that's something that's important in divorce. You lose a future that you thought you had. But that can also happen if you're really getting on with someone on the first, second, third date. And obviously, uh, if you drill down into what's really going on for that person, often we will find, not always, we'll find one of two things actually. Either there's some awfully painful loss in their past that they haven't quite got past, and every loss we experience, uh, I originally, back in the day, um, did a lot of work with Cruz, the bereavement charity, and there's obviously quite a lot in common with bereavement and breakups. Obviously, bereavement is the daddy of all losses, uh, but I remember them saying in the training, every loss we experience resonates with other losses we've had in the past. So if there's been I don't know, if you lost your father when you were 10 and then, and they were, say they were unexpected, they died in an accident or something and it was unexpected and then you get ghosted by somebody after three dates, it, your reaction can be a combination of those two things and that's just the kind of thing that therapy can help you unpick and again going back to how psychodynamic therapy works you can the more conscious you are of like oh it's not just this person it's really to do with what happened and the beliefs I formed when I lost my dad and the, how I wasn't allowed to mourn that at the time because I had to go to school the next day or whatever it might be it, therapy can really help with that. Mm. And, and, you know, we also talked about how people got stuck into awful sort of cycles of, of basically, you know, cyber stalking and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. And I wondered, you know, how can you help people when they can't stop doing such things? Yes. I mean, we can get into difficult cycles to do with anything. I mean, I'll come on to cyber stalking in a minute, but I get increasing, it seems like every new person that comes to see me, every new client I get says, I'm overthinking. And I, you know, mm. and of course that it is the nature of the mind to think, mm. but we can get in kind of Ch what up north they call chuntering, you know, thoughts that just kind of chunter round and round and round, and that can be a difficult cycle. Uh, often it's your brain trying to make sense of something that has a painful feeling at its base. Your brain is just going round and round and round trying to uh, make sense of, say, being um, dumped or make sense of I dump that person why can't I get past it I mean that you know I get people come to me done the dumping it's not just what we might call the dumpy it's not the very flattering way of talking about it I realize <laughs> but I've started now so um, <laughs> um, but yeah so it, there's gonna be something painful and 
anything painful, we have all these defense mechanisms in us to try and um, make the pain, to try and prevent us feeling a painful feeling. And one defense mechanism that we can use in 2020 is to go on Facebook and see what they've been doing. It's kind of like a distraction. It's not really distracting you from the painful feeling. And there's a whole spectrum of that, that you can have um, deleted your ex on every form of social media, but maybe you can go into their sister's account, who you're still friends with, or you could, you know, and have a quick look. And of course, nearly always what you see is going to be painful. Nobody posts up on Facebook or Instagram pictures of them still in their pyjamas at three o'clock in the afternoon because they can't get over their breakup. Yeah. Uh, it'd be more helpful if more people did that, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Everybody posts up, look, I'm, you know, looking great. Uh, I understand, for example, there is such a thing, there's a thing called revenge body, which when after you've split up with someone, you get your you get to the gym and you get really fit and then you post loads of pictures like look what you're missing um, you know uh, again what that person's the ex of that person will be seeing the wonderfully fit revenge body they won't be seeing the difficult painful feelings that cause them to get fit like that in the first place um, so, you know, uh, there's a wonderful uh, phrase about one of the historians of technology, I think he's called Melvin Kurtzberg or something like that, Melvin somebody, and he said, um, technology is no, n not either good nor bad, nor is it neutral, which I think is a really good phrase. It's like we can use social media in profoundly unneutral ways. Um, and I've had people who've come to me saying, I can't get over this breakup, and I also need to talk to you, and I kind of want to confess how I'm using social media. Help me stop using social media, because I just obsessively look at this guy or this woman, and everything I see hurts me, but I just can't delete them, and I just can't stop myself. Do you Doing make suggestions it. at that point? Uh, not really, because therapists on the whole are not about making suggestions. I would, um, I would try, you know, it's the real therapist, the, cli the therapist cliche, sitting on the uh, fence answer, but what's that about for you that you're doing that? But it is an important thing that the person really gets underneath the automatic behaviour. Why am I doing this? How is it making me feel? What am I trying to get out of it? And that's the therapy. The minute you start to think about those things, you're taking some of the charge out of the automatic behaviour. And then there are ways, you know, a, a therapist will kind of encourage you along a healthier road. <laughs> uh, and I've had cl clients who've come up with their own solutions. One of them, her mother was in in AA and she thought I could I could have like a social media sponsor so every time I feel like you know going online and looking to see what that bastard's doing now <laughs> I can um, you know I can ring my mum and tell her don't do that and it you know it worked, it worked. yeah um, this is, you've, you've done, covered this so well, I have no more questions about this, but I wanted to ask um, if you had therapy, well you would have had therapy yourself, mm -hmm. you became a therapist, yeah. what did you discover about yourself when you had therapy? Cool. How long have we got? Um, well, you know, I really struggled with relationships myself. Uh, it's a strange thing that tends to happen as a therapist is you get clients who kind of echo your own issues, uh, hopefully the ones you've completely dealt with. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, I just, I think one of the great things I got from um, therapy uh, is 
And it sounds completely counterintuitive, and it sounds, it doesn't sound like rocket science, but it's incredibly hard to do. Actually, sit with your feelings. You know, don't go pinging straight into another relationship to try and make you feel better about the one that just ended. Um, just sort of sit and let yourself grieve a bit, or let yourself be really furious and take it out on a cushion. You know, we can all, and I have done, do all these various things to try and escape the feeling. And I think, you know, if I could ban the word should, I would. You know, I shouldn't be feeling this three months on, I shouldn't still be upset. But actually just kind of be kinder to yourself. I think that's a big thing I got from therapy, is to just be kinder to myself about about difficult feelings rather than try and run away from them. Very interesting. Thanks.